Welcome to Real Estate Pulse with McQueen and Gottlieb. I'm really happy to be joined by the co-founders of McQueen and Gottlieb, Patrick McQueen, Ben Gottlieb, the number one ranked real estate law firm in Arizona, according to Ranking Arizona. So we've been hearing a lot lately about the Homestead Law. I know nothing about it. So can you guys tell me, what is the Homestead Law? <laughs> that's, that's almost a loaded question, Michael. <laughs> um, I don't even think it's a Homestead Law anymore. So traditionally, uh, Arizona had a, a pretty robust homestead law. Mm -hmm. And when you think of homestead laws, you think of Florida, uh, with, with, you know, people go to Florida to, to avoid creditors because sure. they have strong homestead laws. Same, same with Texas. And here in Arizona, we had a pretty strong homestead law. But what we have now is a different sort of mechanism to get creditors and judgment holders paid at a real estate close of escrow. Whereas before we had that, but it just wasn't that strong in favor of creditors. Now it's, it's very favorable in, in, in favor of creditors. So we've really switched um, the, the, the statutory scheme for homestead. So I don't even call it a homestead law anymore. Okay. Okay. I call it a way to pay creditors in certain circumstances. And there's a couple of ways we can talk about how, how you get there. But, um, you know, Arizona had, had homestead laws since, I think, 1913. They've evolved. Is that right? Yeah, it's so been the, in place since for hundred years, and in hundred years we had consistent, understandable laws. Now we've got this scheme where it's eight pages of statutes that you have to kind of map out who gets paid, when they get paid, who gets notice, when they get notice, and it's become a little bit of a mess. So I don't even call it a homestead law anymore. I just call it a, a way to get creditors paid uh, when before that they they weren't getting paid. So it's kind of in, con, counterintuitive. But if somebody has a judgment against your homestead prior to this law going into effect, which it went, mm -hmm. became effective January 1st, 2022, there was no real lien associated with that. Okay, Now these are automatically liens. So if a, if a judgment holder has a lien, or I'm sorry, if a judgment holder has a judgment against you, it now means something. It's a lien and they have the rights of a lien holder and they're going to get paid most likely at a close of escrow, particularly because we, ha we now have so much more equity Sure. in people's homes. So sure. it's now a lien, whereas before it really wasn't a lien. Okay, so so be prior to 2022, you had $150,000 that was protected, right? Now it's gone to $250,000. So what, what, is, what does that mean for, for the typical homeowner, Ben? Yeah, sure, Michael. So for the typical homeowner, let's say uh, now with, with rapidly rising home prices, you know, let's say your home is worth $500,000 um, and you have a $250,000 mortgage, meaning mm -hmm. that you have uh, for sake of simplicity, 250000 in equity, um, even though there may be a $10 million creditor judgment resulting from a civil lawsuit, um, the homeowner is protected in that 250000 of, of equity. And so it um, doesn't matter how big the judgment is, uh, that, that serves as protection to the homeowner. But as, as Patrick noted, uh, the law has, has really been flipped on its head because now this longstanding exception where uh, the judgment would not operate as a lien, uh, now automatically operates as a lien against the homestead, homestead property. And so that has huge ramifications in the event that there's a voluntary sale because now it's a lien. Uh, notice requirements kick in where the title company has to notify um, the judgment creditor. The judgment creditor has an opportunity to object. And, and of course, they're going to get, just sit back and get paid off. Uh, in a lot of these cases where there's voluntary sales, whereas before that wasn't the case and the judgment creditor had to actually jump through additional hoops, file paperwork with the clerk of the Superior Court and try to serve paperwork on the local sheriff to force a sheriff sale, which requires um, you know, a significant showing and uh, additional legal hoops that must be jumped through. So none of that has to happen anymore. So it's a very creditor favored law, uh, in, in my opinion, as well as, as well as obviously Patrick's, yeah. So this explains exactly why we, we need real estate attorneys, because I have no idea. Like, um, so with rapidly rising home values, this, this is significant, right? Because, because now people have a lot more equity in their house. So now, does that mean that, that more creditors can come after them? Well, yes, essentially. Um, the, the other part of this is the law is actually retroactive in effect. It's not for judgments, go well, it is for judgments going forward. You know, if I get a judgment against somebody in, in June of this year and, and record that judgment, it's, it's, it's effective under the new laws, but it also goes backwards. So let's say I had a judgment five, six, seven, eight years ago, 
that really didn't mean anything uh, if, if it applied to my homestead because okay. I had home, homestead protection. Now those creditors may wow. get paid. Now one of the other points that you that you that you raised is okay. Well, we've now got more equity. Are there going to be more creditors out there? Yes, but also. I think a lot of these real estate sales can can get messed up because if you think about it, let's say I want to buy your house and I'm one of these cash buyers out there and I, I want to close in five days and you go, great, let's close mm -hmm. in five days. I'm going to get my cash in five days. My house is going to be sold in five days. Well, now under this new statute, if you have a judgment against you, that may not happen because the title company now has to go and give your creditors, the person who oh holds the judgment, notice and they have 20 days to respond. So let's say that you entered into a five-day contract with me, and now you can't perform because you're waiting for your creditor to respond as to whether they're okay with, with their, their payoff. Wow. So it, it is creating a big mess, and, and it can mess up a lot of these fast deals if there's a judgment out there, and if, it doesn't, if, if there's no arrangements made for that judgment to be paid off. So how many, how many cases are you seeing now that, that are related to the homestead law or that comes, comes into play? We're starting to get consults. We're starting to get cases. I mean, keep in mind, this is a brand new law. It just went into effect right. January 1st of this year. Um, but uh, so, some of the cases we're getting, which is really interesting, is a loophole that's been foreclosed by the new law, which is essentially what a lot of homeowners were doing before that owned homestead property, uh, is they would have equity in their home, uh, and they would also have a judgment recorded against them. And remember, under the old law, it didn't operate as a lien, so the homeowner uh, shrewdly came up with an idea. They said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to refinance. I'm going to cash out. And I'm going to uh, strip the strip the equity in in my home, right? Because I'm going to increase uh, the loan balance that is is owed against mm -hmm. my home, and this would frustrate or make it more difficult for the judgment creditor to jump through those additional hoops to collect on on their judgment. Uh, so now, uh, what the new law says is, look, if you go and refinance as a homeowner uh, and you have a judgment against you, uh, the the judgment creditor has a lien against those cash out proceeds. And okay. so the judgment creditor, they don't have to do anything. They're going to get paid off first. So that strategy now is, is, is completely ineffective. And a lot of uh, borrowers and, and homeowners were utilizing that strategy, which, which I think was the impetus for that change in the law to get rid of that loophole. So, um, so that's another interesting aspect of the new law. So there's a lot more to it than just going from $150,000 protected to $250,000 protected. There, there's a ton to it. And I've tried to break this down for, for a lot of people, even title companies, they'll come to us and say, well, how does this law affect us as title companies? It's very significant for title companies. Title companies now have a, a bigger obligation. When they're figuring out the cash proceeds to a, a buyer, to the seller, um, that's where a lot of math gets involved. You know, if it's $200,000 or less, then there's no notice that needs to be provided to, to the creditors. Once you hit the $200,000 threshold, well, then notice has to be uh, uh, provided and, and 20 days to respond, and there can be this back and forth. And if the parties can't agree on, on the amount that that creditor is entitled to be paid, you have to file a lawsuit. And so our advice, or at least my advice thus far, has been when, when people contact us, well, if you're in one of those situations, or if you know that there's a judgment out there, prior to listing your property, Try to negotiate that deal. Try to get rid of that judgment so that it doesn't slow down your sale. Because the last thing you want is to enter into a contract, be bound to a buyer, and then get hit with a lawsuit for specific performance because we're waiting for, for this lawsuit to be resolved as to how much I actually owe here. So that's significant. So, so title companies have, have a lot more responsibility. I suspect that they're going to raise their fees and, and, and cover to cover their extra work. But if you really, if the, the way in which I break this down for, for people is, if it's less than $200,000 of equity that you as the, as the seller are going to get, not a big deal. The statute operates like it used to. Once you hit $200,000, then you may have an issue. Once it goes above $250,000, the creditor is entitled to be paid uh, even more. And so then it becomes bigger. So as we have more equity, they're getting more, this goes back to your original question, as we have more equity, these creditors are, are getting, they're coming out of the woodwork. That's for sure. Wow, it's so, it's so complicated. So the title companies are impacted. Obviously the home seller is impacted. Is the home buyer impacted at all? Could, could be, because if they, if they say, hey, Michael, I wanna buy your house in five days, and now I can't, because you're involved in a lawsuit to figure out how, how this payoff works, um, then the home buyer may be impacted. The other party that's impacted is the, the real estate agent. What if I, as a real estate agent, am marketing this house for you, not knowing that there's a judgment out there, and I say, you should sell, sign this contract for this five-day closing. 
not knowing about this judgment. Well, I just put myself on the line because I made a mistake not knowing there was a judgment, not knowing how this law worked. For agents, this could be very problematic for them if they're not checking title work, if they're not determining whether there are judgments out there because I could get you to, con I could convince you to take this particular offer and it could be so messed up because there's a judgment out there that I didn't know about and now I've set you up for a lawsuit again from the buyer because the, you can't perform because because there's this whole big mess. So the agents have much, uh, real estate agents have a much more sort of heightened obligation now to figure out what's on title before they even take a listing. So it's a mess. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. So is this just, uh, does this just impact the residential world? Does it impact the commercial world at all or no? I mean, I, I think it's mostly limited to, you know, uh, homestead property, which okay. is going to be, you know, residential property. It can be a mobile home. It can be a condominium. But um, but really what we're talking about here are, are you know, home, the Homestead Act and an amendment to the Homestead Act. Um, one other one other thing that I think is, is important to note, though, um, is that uh, this law also creates, as we talked about, additional obligations for title companies and for, for judgment creditors. Uh, but there's there's also going to be increased litigation because the law says, look, if you're um, a title company and you don't calculate this correctly or you don't give the notice correctly uh, to the judgment creditor, or if you're a judgment creditor and you object without a basis, now there can be all these damages and reimbursement of attorney's fees oh awarded by the court. And so wow. it can just be all this extra litigation that just simply didn't exist before. Uh, and, and it's going to have huge ramifications because of, of these tight uh, close of escrows that we see on a lot of these contracts and delays that we're going to see. So it is, it is really interesting. We're already seeing it uh, uh, play out, but uh, we're, we're expecting more, more litigation even to come. Wow. And especially because people still don't understand it because it's still so new. Still so, new. So, so, so from a legal standpoint, what do people need to know about the homestead law to keep themselves out of trouble if they're, <laughs> if they're buying, selling, or you know, if, they, if they have a business that is in the real estate world, what do they need to know? Well, you know, uh, we've created a, we have this flow chart, <laughs> mm -hmm. which may be helpful. So we're happy to provide that. And, and, and so you can kind of plug yourself into this flow chart and see what is going to happen to you. Um, they need to know that number one, judgments now matter when it comes to your homestead property. Okay, that's, that's, that's huge. Number two, my suggestion is that if you know you have a judgment out there, and a lot of these judgments are from the short sale days, 2010, 2012, those still have some play here. Judgments are good for 10 years and then they can be renewed. And so if you had a judgment that's old and sitting out there, it's time to try to negotiate that and try to negotiate that before you even think about listing your property because you probably get a better deal than when you're under the gun. Sure. And so knowing those two things, just knowing that the law exists and knowing that it's retroactive in nature, I think those are the, the biggest two things that homeowners can know. Um, agents, same thing. They need, to, they need to know that um, this law exists and they ought to look at title work before taking a listing or have a conversation with those sellers before taking a listing. Hey, are there any judgments that could pop up that could slow this thing down? Because the last thing I wanna do is get you under a contract that you can't perform under. So, so there's a lot out there. And, and like I said, we have a flow chart. We provided it to title companies. We provided it to real estate agents. Happy to provide it to anybody else. It, it, it's kind of dummy proof. You put yourself into whatever, wherever you think you're at and this will spit out exactly what's going to happen. So um, if that's helpful to people, we're, we're happy to give that out. Well, great. Well, people are going to have a lot of questions about this. Ben, how do they get in touch with you if they have, the, if they have more questions? Uh, sure. Uh, my email address is ben at mandglawgroup.com. Okay. And Patrick? Same, same email address, patrick at mandglawgroup.com or 602-533-2840. Uh, okay. Thank you. Once again, for Real Estate Pulse with McQueen and Gottlieb, if you have any real estate law questions, and you're going to have a lot after this episode, <laughs> mnglaw.com. That's mnglaw.com. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.